Sonic X episode 27. So there's a bunch of recap, and sadly it doesn't clarify whether Sonic was sent home with Chuck or not, and what happened immediately afterwards, so it's entirely worthless. We see a dark rainy jungle with Big the Cat in it, and some white meteor thing crashes. And Froggy goes after it, but turns out to be a Chaos Emerald because fuck originality. We really are ripping off a cutscene from SA1. Well, at least with this, it's actually animated well. So we actually see Chaos going into Froggy's mouth. But when it's so similar to the game, it feels extremely pointless and boring shit. Why show this when it's exactly like the game? If they wanted to recreate SD1's cutscenes to actually look good with actually good animation, you'd think they could have released them separate from the show, though that would be harder to find. But it would be on the internet. I would rather see a completely original plot. Then we see the government confirming that the Mystic Ruins was brought to Earth, and they're already planning to use it as a tourist attraction to boost the economy, which makes sense. And I wish they said that in the game. And they're planning to use surveillance satellites. When Rue says that Eggman's too smart for them, fortunately they're not angry at her calling her a traitor. The president makes it clear that Sonic and his friends are all still on Earth, with no explanation. I guess Sonic merely brought Angel Island back to Knuckles, and that's all he did with Chaos Control, because he really wanted to humor Chris. That makes sense, I suppose. Chris then hopes Sonic's okay, saying that he knows he's out there. Huh? Did he stay with Chris or not? He stayed on Earth to humor him, but he didn't immediately tell him he would stay on Earth to humor him? Amy feels lonely, as I noticed that a quarter of the way into the episode, I'm still bored with no action or charm in sight. Then she complains that Sonic disappeared on them. This is so arbitrary. So Sonic didn't stay with Chris? What, did he leave something at home on Mobius and want to go back to get it? Why the fuck didn't he stay with Chris to begin with if that was the entire reason he didn't send his friends back home? This whole episode is gonna be padding to justify him getting to Earth, isn't it? That's so dumb! He didn't- he knew Chris didn't want him to leave, so he left without saying he'll be back? You have to try to be that insensitive, and nobody ever calls Sonic out on it. We see a bird being put in a robot, and Eggman activating the Gamma robots. I don't care! In a padded out anime, why would they prioritize showing us worthless padding over showing us where he got those animals in the first place? Well, at least it's interesting to see them all fight Sonic dolls that look exactly like Sonic. But why doesn't Eggman just make one of those Sonic dolls into skin for a robot, with the Sonic doll as a super robot, and ruin Sonic's reputation? This isn't original from the game, so I'm just bored. When it's exactly like the game, it just feels like pointless padding. Do we really need to be told all of their names? Where the hell did Eggman get Chaos on regular Earth? It makes no sense for there to be Echidna history on Earth, but well, I guess I guess in Sonic X, the Echidna history is actually taking place on Mobius, since Mystic Ruins was from Mobius and was sent to Earth. I'm so confused. It, it makes more sense in a realistic, normal Earth if you simply made Chaos or took it from Mobius. But when there's two worlds, a realistic and unrealistic one, having Chaos be from the realistic one is just idiotic. Especially since Chow are from Mobius, and Chaos came into being 8,000 years ago. It's not like Sonic Adventure explained that the Echidnas and the Mystic Ruins came from another planet. Cream stares at a yellow emerald, which Chris says was in a jewelry store earlier. I think his mom found it for them. So at least she was useful for something. And then Cream and then Cream discovers the tailed frog, and Big falls over on Chris because lame joke. This is so glaringly pointless. I don't care about any of this. Archie's SC1 adaptation kicked the shit out of all of this because it actually tried to be unique and interesting. It had Nate Morgan and the Freedom Fighters. This is just an advertisement for a different continuity that has nothing to do with this which is very distracting. Big and Cream encounter Chaos Zero, and it inexplicably causes destruction for no reason. It's not like people were hurting Chow in front of it. The Kindas being bad guys was like 8,000 years ago. And Sonic shows up, 
making me wonder why he didn't instantly reunite with Chris if he never left Earth. He's so insensitive in the show. And now it's time to rip off SA1 again. Seeing chaos cause destruction doesn't add anything. It just confuses me because he's doing this for no reason. These people didn't do anything to it. It was never established Eggman brainwashed chaos. These guys are humans, not echidnas. But apparently it's still mad from what the echidnas did 8,000 years ago. Sonic spin dashes up a wall, hitting it once before it's bossed by ends. Because X will stop at nothing to not be an action series. I thought he'd hit it a bunch, but apparently it's faithful to the games right up to the point where it's expected to animate Sonic hitting bad guys. You know, Dragon Ball Z has a bunch of action. Why is this anime sucking so hard at it? Eggman steals the yellow emerald to power up chaos. This is all Cream's fault for not thinking to bring it to the containment chamber right away. Well, at least they cut out the filler for once by having Eggman power up Chaos to Chaos 2 instantly after the Chaos Zero fight. Knuckles implies that something happened to the Master Emerald. So again, they cut out the filler by not showing that. So much for us clearly seeing what happened to it in good animation. Eggman then throws the red Chaos Emerald to Chaos. We never got to see how he earned this emerald, by the way. That's lazy! Sonic and Knuckles are knocked away from chaos by electricity in it, which woke me up. And Sonic takes Knuckles away from a water stream to save him. The water stream causes collateral damage as I wonder why the worthless characters who do nothing aren't running away to avoid getting hurt. And now suddenly, oh never mind, he still gets electrocuted. Why is he trying to attack an electrified being? Surprisingly, even the overpowered Sonic can't beat it with his spin dash. Sure is nice of it to not kill him with electricity and instead just make a force field with it that makes no sense. This feels like such padding. They're really dragging out the heroes not learning their lesson and trying to attack an invincible being. Sonic spin dashes all over to gain momentum and then runs into chaos, which somehow makes it collapse in one hit when it was invincible before. Fuck this. One hit? This show has no idea how to have good action scenes. Most of the time, anyways. It's not always bad to end the fight in one attack, as long as that attack makes sense to end it so quick. Sonic shouldn't win from just one spin dash. It takes eight hits to beat a boss fight in the games. And this isn't a mere bad nick. And they're trying to be like the games, so they're mostly like the games except for the 1% where they aren't. Holy shit, that was boring. This was the blandest game adaptation I've ever seen. Even more bland than the so-called game adaptations of Flynn in the preboot, where he just adapted the first cutscene. Because here, there's an entire half an hour episode of just nothing but filler and ripping off cutscene from SA1. Which also feels like filler because I've already seen those. So it's like they're trying to appeal to the game purists by making it like the games, but the game purists are the only ones who are going to hate this because they already know this plot. Archie did this better because it actually tried to be original. It would be bad enough if it was nothing but cutscenes from SA1 and good animation, but the fact that the original parts are just Chris filler where nothing's going on, it's just insulting. You have something original and it's that, really? Nothing happened here. Just Chris talking to people, like Big the Cat. Chris didn't do anything in the fight against Chaos Zero, so we didn't need him there with Cream. We could have cut all those scenes out and lost nothing. I loved that Chaos had electricity power. Even if it's confusing because that electricity should just kill a water being, you'd think that the heroes would use electricity against it to defeat it. But whatever, if it's able to be a ghost who possesses water like a puppet to have a physical form, it stands to reason that electricity in its physical form would do nothing to hurt it, because it's really just a spirit. It's just that it has an eternal organ in the form of a brain, and yet that's not being killed by the electricity. But electricity would probably just come from the Chaos Emeralds. This was too faithful to the game, which just made it feel like worthless padding filler because it was exceedingly pointless. When it's not being original, I feel like I'm getting nothing out of it because I'm not seeing anything new. It's nothing I haven't seen before. And that's why game adaptations need to be original. It's not them not doing their research. It's them being creative and actually interesting and engaging. 
Also, why the fuck didn't Sonic with the super speed just instantly reunite with Chris instead of disappearing if the whole reason he didn't send all his friends home with Chaos Control and instead brought the Mystic Ruins and Angel Island to Earth was to humor Chris when he begged him not to leave him? That doesn't make any sense at all. And if Sonic... I hope we're not being expected to believe that Angel Island returned by accident on Sonic's part. It'd be nice if we saw Knuckles thank Sonic for bringing Angel Island to him, and Sonic said, no problem. 